Hello, everyone. I'm Reverend T.J. Parlett. I am the senior pastor here at First Presbyterian. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this Festival of Music concert event today. I know that it still feels a little strange to not be here in the sanctuary to listen to this music and hear these stories live, but we're happy that we could bring you what we can of this concert through digital technology. Thank you for joining us. I also want to say thank you to Dan Schunard for being with us today. I'd also like to express thanks to Donovan Hill for lending us his skills as a sound engineer, and of course, John Stender, who edits this all together and puts it online for our enjoyment. Thank you all. To continue this wonderful series, we do depend on your financial support. I hope that you'll consider making a donation to a festival of music by sending a check to First Presbyterian Church, 512 3rd Street Southwest, Rochester, Minnesota, 55902. Just a quick note about upcoming concerts and events. Our next Festival of Music concert will be on April 25th when we welcome the Anchia Saxophone Quartet. This concert will be pre-recorded and will premiere at 4 p.m. on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. I would also invite you to tune in to our Lenten midweek prayer services, which will feature local organists taking part in the service with an extended organ recital as the postlude. Since we're unable to safely gather for our traditional Lenten noontime organ concerts this year, this seemed like a good way to still do that, but do it in a different way. This midweek service will premiere at 7 p.m. each Wednesday in Lent on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. You can go to those and look at any that you have missed as they will be stored there. Will you join me now for a word of prayer? Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of music and for the talented artists who share their gifts with us. As we delight in this beautiful music and these moving stories, let us always remember that all good gifts come from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's wonderful to be here this afternoon. It is afternoon where we are right now, and it's Lent, season of reflection, of remembering of discernment, and yet as so often happens in Lent, it's also a glorious spring day. The sun is shining, birds are singing, it's warm, stuff is melting, and we're reminded that we're all part of this circle of life, and this is a season to remember that just before everything busts out loose and goes crazy. So it seems that we could start with a springy song like this one from Irving Berlin. Feel free to sing along if you know the words. It's Blue Skies from 1926. Blue skies smiling at me, nothing but blue skies. Do I see bluebirds singing their song? Nothing but bluebirds all day long. Never saw the sun shining so bright. Never saw things going so right. Noticing the days hurrying by. When you're in love, my, how they fly, those blue days. All of them gone, nothing but blue skies from now on. saw the sun shining so bright never saw things going so right noticing the days hurrying by when you're in love my how they fly those blue days all of them gone nothing but blue skies 
From now on, nothing but blue skies from now on. Irving Berlin, 1926. I hope you were singing along, dancing if you felt like it. It's all safe at home. Um, so this is going to be a little bit of a reflective program of some stories and songs. I'm so grateful for the invitation that came from John Stender and others here to uh, come and do a quick little program for you. Uh, it may be a sort of sentimental and nostalgic program. It might feel that way at times because this feels to me like a time of remembering a lot of people, including some we've lost just recently. But it certainly has been a season of difficulty and, and loss for many, for certainly for the past year or so. So there's going to be a little bit of looking back on that. And the first looking back I want to do, though, is, uh, is just to acknowledge my history with the Presbyterian Church uh, as, a, as a kid who grew up in a, in a Catholic family. I'm the second of six kids. We went to relatively new cinder block churches as I was growing up. And, uh, and then in high school, we started studying. My brothers, Joe and Bill and I, Joey, Danny, and Billy, started studying with Dr. Ed Berryman at Westminster Presbyterian Church, downtown Minneapolis. And you might be seeing right now a photo of Joey, Danny, and Billy in our first years of collaborating at the piano. The piano was something that we all kind of ran to at about the same time. Joe might have been seven, I was six. Bill was maybe four when the piano first showed up in the house. This little snapshot of the three of us is probably from 68 or 69, and it probably shows us uh, doing a six-handed rendition of, I don't know, we did, uh, we did a six-handed rendition of Chopsticks, Later on, we developed a six-handed version of The Entertainer. Uh, we had a, a bit of repertoire for six hands. And Joey, Danny, Billy uh, did a lot of stuff together musically growing up. And in high school, we started studying with Ed Berryman at Westminster Presbyterian. And Westminster, uh, I think because, uh, because of Westminster, I. I feel a particular debt of gratitude to the Presbyterian Church for, for beautiful woodwork and uh, beautiful interiors, church interiors. Westminster had the big kind of horseshoe balcony with beautiful woodwork. And, uh, and so that, that is part of the debt that I feel to the Presbyterian Church, but, uh, but also to, uh, for bringing uh, Ed Berryman Dr. Edward Berryman as a teacher into my life and the lives of, of all in our family. So uh, there's a later photograph of uh, Joe, Dan, and Bill. We collaborated um, on a number of things growing up, and I think the second photograph is from a 2011 concert that we did together at St. Joan of Arc. But we did a lot of recitals together at, uh, at Westminster and uh, learned a lot of of challenging repertoire with Dr. Ed Berryman, who principally was an organist, um, but taught piano as well. I'd like to play a, a piece by Edvard Grieg right now, which is one of the pieces that I worked on with him. And this is called Wedding Day at Trolldhaugen.
Wedding Day at Trolldhagen, a bit of Edvard Grieg, remembering Dr. Edward Berryman, my teacher from about 1976 until 1980 or so, and teacher too, and many others in my family, including brothers Joe and Bill. Um, I worked on the Rhapsody in Blue while I was studying with Dr. Berryman, and I've been lucky enough to play that tune with a number of orchestras over the years, and most recently with the, well, recently, I'll say, with the Rochester Symphony Orchestra just a few years ago. And I was thinking uh, that I might play my, my piano bar version of the Rhapsody in Blue, which uh, is a shortened version of the thing, a short attention span version of the tune, but I'm thinking now that I might just do a little Gershwin tune that I did with the Rochester Symphony uh, on that program a few years back. It's a nice tune for a reflective season. And this is Our Love is Here to Stay. It's a tune that, uh, that a melody that George Gershwin wrote right before he died uh, at the relatively young age of 38. And uh, it had no lyric at the time and Ira wrote the lyric in remembrance of his brother. This is Our Love is Here to Stay. feel like singing? It's very clear Our love is here to stay Not for a year Not for a year But ever and a day The radio and the telephone The radio and the telephone and the movies that we know may all be passing fancies and in time may go but oh my dear our love is here to stay together we're going along way in time the Rockies may tumble Gibraltar may crumble they're only made of clay but our love is here to stay Melody by George Gershwin, lyrics by Ira in memory of his brother. I, I don't know if it's something that continues at the Mayo Clinic, but for, uh, an, on a number of occasions, I did something that was called Harmony at Mayo, where music was performed down in one of the atria, and it was 
It was sent live into, into uh, patients' rooms all over the campus. And I recall being down here uh, with Prudence Johnson, down here with Ruth McKenzie. On each occasion, there were people I knew who were sitting in chairs, sometimes in wheelchairs, in the atrium watching and listening. People who have come to Mayo for for help in, in dark times in their lives. And they've all gotten that help and gotten hope and sustenance. And one of them was my brother, Joe, who was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer um, in 2017. And it was far advanced enough that things moved fairly quickly, but they were down here at Mayo a number of times. Uh, to get information, reassurance, help, expert advice. And I was reminded that, uh, that purple is the color of Lent, um, and I wish I could claim that, that I was uh, that tuned in to the aesthetics of the liturgical year to, to claim that as the choice of, of this here tie, but it's also the color of, of pancreatic cancer awareness. And so I wear this in memory of my brother Joe, who passed away in 2018. We played so much together. There have been some other, uh, a couple of other losses that if you don't mind, I'd like to acknowledge right now. And one of them is of a dear friend and colleague, Debbie Duncan, singer who grew up in Detroit, who spent a lot of years in Los Angeles, and then came here to sing at a newly opened fancy nightclub, Rupert's Nightclub in Golden Valley, and decided to stay. And had several decades of being really the preeminent jazz singer and singer of just about everything around town. And I was lucky enough to work with Debbie really regularly for a, a long spell of time. And one of the most memorable gigs we had together was with a group of folks. You might be seeing a photo right about now, a group of folks uh, doing a gospel brunch every Sunday at a restaurant called Nostalgia on the West Bank of the University of Minnesota, uh, which is now gone. The building's been demolished, but at the time we played upstairs. They served brunch on Sundays and we did music for a couple of hours. Debbie Duncan is up in the upper left-hand side of the photo along with Gwen Matthews and her daughter Candy, who is down at the bottom of the photograph, and then Dennis Spears. And, uh, and it was, it was a, a tremendously rich experience for me, both in terms of music and in terms of the friendships that developed between all of us in that group. Um, and I thought I would do a tune that, uh, that Debbie sang pretty much every Sunday when we were together during that period, which was the mid-1990s. This, uh, this is called His Eye is on the Sparrow, um, a tune that I think Mahalia Jackson sang and recorded along with so many other people.
I'm going to sing it once, just so that we hear the words. Imagine that somebody like Debbie is singing it. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me, and I sing because I'm happy, and I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow And I know he watches me His eye is on the sparrow And I know he watches That's a gospel tune. Debbie was a great, great singer of R&B, of blues, of rock and roll, and of classical music every once in a while, and of jazz, and uh, perhaps jazz m maybe was her first love or the thing that she was most noted for. The Minnesota Music Awards, after many years running, of Debbie getting best vocalist. They simply created a perpetual Debbie Duncan Award that was given to her every year. And uh, maybe we do a Cole Porter tune that I know was something that she did often. Every time we say goodbye.
for Debbie Duncan, who passed away December 18th of last year. Also, more recently, another friend, Peter Ostrushko, uh, passed away on February 24th. Peter is someone who I started working with regularly in 2002, but I had been a fan of his ever since I was a teenager and my family started tuning in to A Prairie Home Companion on Saturday evenings. And he was the wizard of the mandolin and the fiddle and uh, one of the comic wizards of the Mando Boys ensemble on the show. And I came to know him over the course of a dozen plus years of working together as uh, a person of great, great integrity and stability and depth as a person, as a musician, and, uh, and as a friend. And I'd like to maybe play a couple of tunes here to remember Peter. He was somebody who had a world traveler's perspective on music. He grew up in Northeast Minneapolis, but his music was from all over the globe. And he was somebody who helped um, deepen my interest in French musette music, in Brazilian music, in Irish music, and, uh, and kind of got me playing accordion a little bit more than I ever had before then. So I'm going to switch to the accordion here, and, uh, and we're going to do a couple of tunes for Peter. Thank you. 
It's a little French musette called La Mangave. Here's a, a set of reels by John Doherty, who was an Irish fiddler and tinsmith throughout the 1900s, one of the last practitioners of the itinerant tinsmith and fiddler profession in Ireland, lived into the 1970s, I believe, and perhaps a little bit later, but Peter studied his music and transcribed a lot of it. And here's just a short set of, of his tunes. I started working with Peter Ostrushko around 2002, which was right when I had returned from a five-month bicycling adventure in Europe. 9-11 had happened the year before. I had just bought myself a little red accordion that was small enough to strap onto the back of my bicycle, and I decided that it might be a perfect midlife crisis sort of trip to set aside everything I was doing and head for France and Italy, places whose languages I had studied and spoke, and places I had traveled and had some friends. 
and spend the entirety of a summer on the bicycle with a tent and a sleeping bag and a little accordion just to see what it might feel like to try being a bicycling vagabond for a while. I started in Paris. I worked my way down to the Pyrenees where I worked on a farm for a couple of weeks uh, picking rose petals night and day and rose petals that were turned into jam which was delicious um, and then continued along the French Riviera all the way down the coast of Italy down as far as Rome and then and then back up uh, to the Netherlands to Belgium and then across to England where by then it was September and it was cold and rainy and I had no idea why I was still uh, living the busker dream when all the kids were back in school and it was time to come back home and do something more serious. So I had come home from this, this adventure, um, playing with lots of people, meeting folks along the way, learning music along the way. And this was when, uh, when Peter first invited me to join him and play in his amazing band of musicians and play this, uh, this uh, truly polyglot assemblage of music that Peter always pulled together. Uh, let me play a couple of things that were, that were very popular on the bicycle uh, trip. I discovered that, uh, that everyone, anywhere, whatever country you went to, knew uh, the song uh, Besame Mucho. Uh, that was de rigueur for street performers everywhere you went. Um, but people also seem to love songs from Walt Disney movies. No matter where you went, they loved Walt Disney music. And, uh, and of course, I was drawn back again and again to the tune from Lady and the Tramp, uh, which was... Note, you remember that one? It's, it's the spaghetti scene, right? The dogs in the restaurant with the spaghetti and the waiters coming by with mandolin. Um, but I also found that everywhere I went in Europe, uh, people wanted to hear Frank Sinatra and they wanted to hear Elvis Presley. And it was, uh, so it felt like a, a moment to bring up the fact that Elvis drew a lot of inspiration from European music from French music, from operatic music, from Italian. So I just thought we'd do a little bit of one of his big hits, uh, which is an old, old French song from the 1700s. Um, perhaps you know the French lyric. Plaisir d'amour ne dure qu'un moment Chagrin L'amour dure toute la vie. Which means the pleasure of love lasts but a moment long. The pain of love lasts your whole life. And of course, Elvis's people felt that uh, they needed to change the lyric in order to make it an American pop hit. And so, of course, they came up with Wise men say Only fools rush in But I can't help falling in love with you Shall I stay? Will it be? 
If I can't help falling in love with you. Are you singing along? Here's the high part. Beware. Like a river flows, surely to the sea. Darling, so it goes. Some things are meant to be. I'm going to move to the piano for just a couple more songs. Just a couple more songs here with you today. It's been a pleasure being in this space and being with, uh, with John and Donovan, real people in real time in a real space. These days, it's a rare thing. Thank you for clicking in and joining. I've got one more tune of Peter Ostrushko's, followed by a, a closing song. Uh, Peter was a, a, a consummate writer of melody, melodies that, that soared and that stuck in your mind. And one of his signature tunes was Heart of the Heartland. And I just happened to be playing this with mandolinist Richard Crean on Wednesday afternoon, February 24th, right about the, the, uh, the hour that Peter Past. And if you're at all interested in seeing that recording with the, the sublime Richard Crean playing mandolin on it, uh, it's over at St. Joan of Arc, uh, stjoan.com if you'd like to go look. But for now, I'm offering up this solo piano version of Peter Ostrushka's Heart of the Heartland.
Thanks once again for joining me, joining us for this little bit of music here. It's been my pleasure to, to be here and to remember folks and to join all of you, whoever you might be remembering on this occasion. I'll close with one little number that I do often when I think of my Chouinard grandparents, Casper and Anne, both kind of raised in Northeast Minneapolis and both of them piano players in that early 1900s way that everyone had of having a piano in their house and everybody playing and people gathering around the piano to sing. And my grandparents, whenever they came over for dinner, would sit side by side, cheek to cheek, on the piano bench and play old timey duets. And this was one of them. It's called I'll See You in My Dreams from 1924. They had a sort of rhythmic sound like this when they played together. My grandfather would often just play with one finger. He was holding his pipe with the other hand and would do instant jazz with the one finger, which you accomplish simply by sliding off the black key onto the key, the white key above. And then my grandmother would just kind of hold down the fort playing everything else. I'll see you in my dreams. Hold you in my dreams. Someone took you out of my arms. Still I'll feel the thrill of your charms. Lips that once were mine. Sparkling eyes that shine. They will light my way tonight. I'll see you in my dreams. They will light my way tonight. I'll see you in my dreams. Thanks for joining me.